Hey everybody, uh, so in this video we're going to get you set up with Quarto. Quarto is an open source publishing platform that allows you to integrate your text with your code. So you can produce data rich documents uh, without having to cut and paste stuff. Uh, with Quarto you can produce HTML documents, PDFs, Word documents, presentations, um, you can produce websites, blogs, you can produce books with Quarto. So one way to think about it is as a data science version of Word, PowerPoint, and Wix kind of all rolled into one. It's sort of like R Markdown. If you've used R Markdown before, Quarto is the next generation of R Markdown, but it also has the capacity to handle multiple languages, including Python, Julia, and observable JS. So while this course is going to focus on R, you might want to keep Quarto in mind for future courses that use other languages. I encourage you to go to the uh, Quarto website and have a look at their gallery uh, and you can see examples of the types of documents and projects that I mentioned. Uh, there are articles and reports, uh, both PDF and HTML. Uh, pre presentations, websites, lots of websites, books, uh, and interactive documents. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with Quarto. The first step is to download Quarto. Actually, our studio comes with a version of Quarto installed, but I find it good practice to download it separately, partly because Quarto is new and it's changing really fast. Um, so there are a lot of updates, but also partly because if you want to use it with another IDE, like uh, Microsoft Visual Code, you can do that. Uh, so it's a standalone application that doesn't depend necessarily on our studio. Uh, we want to go ahead and download this. So if you just navigate to this page, I have it linked in the course website, or if you just want to Google Quarto getting started, you'll find a link to this page and It'll detect your system just like our studio did when you downloaded our studio and you can click on it and go ahead and uh, complete the download uh, process. Okay. And then like it says here, you can use it with a number of different IDEs. We're going to be using our studio. Once you have that done, uh, we can go ahead and we can, we can create our first Quarto document. But part of what I want to show you in this lesson as well, is what's referred to as a project-based workflow. Uh, and what that means is we're going to create a project folder. The project folder is going to have a .rproj file. Um, that's an important file. It doesn't look like it does anything, but it actually coordinates all of the files in that folder. Right. This way you don't have to do like a change directory command at the beginning of every script. Uh, our studio will automatically know where to grab the files from because of that uh, .rproj file. Okay, so that's the workflow that we're going to be following in this course. I have a little bit more about that on the course website. If you want to read uh, more about it, I link to a blog post uh, um, that takes a very that has a very um, strong opinion on uh, a project-based workflow. Okay, so we're going to go to File. We're going to go to New Project. So the options here are new directory, existing directory, and version control. You would use new directory if you want to create a new folder for this project, which is what we're going to do. We're going to create a new folder in an existing folder, but we want a new folder for the project. If you already have a, 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 a folder created for the project and you don't need to create a new one, then choose existing directory. And then the other option is version control, uh, which we're not gonna get to in this lesson, but this is if you're basically pushing your project to a GitHub repo, okay? So let's go ahead and select new directory and we'll select new project. And notice here you can select from different types of projects as well. We're just gonna select new project to simplify things, then you have to select where you want to save it, where you want this folder to be created. 
And for the purposes of this example, I created a folder on my desktop called dataviz underscore 2102. You might want to create a folder like this, you know, for this course uh, where you can save projects for this course, okay? Create and save projects for this course, all right? And we'll just call this example project and then hit create. And then what it's gonna do is it's gonna create this project folder called example project within dataviz2102, okay? Um, so this is my desktop folder, this is dataviz2102 where I save this new project folder and this is the project folder and if we click on the project folder we see this file called example underscore project dot rproj. This is an in important file, don't delete it. This is what coordinates all of the different files in your project folder. So the next thing we want to do is to create our first Quarto document. So go to file, go to new file, go to Quarto document and click on it. Then it's gonna ask for a title, say Quarto Test or something like that. Author, you can put your name. Uh, I'll put Prof T here and we'll go ahead and create it. All right, and so there are a few key things about this document that I kinda of wanna point out here. So this first part of the document up here is called a YAML header and this takes care of all of the front matter and formatting for the document. So we can have a title, we can add a subtitle if we want, uh, add a subtitle. We can have multiple authors if we want. Uh, we can specify the font here. Um, all kinds of things. Um, for the most part, in this class, we're gonna be working with pretty simple HTML or PDF documents. So we'll be telling Quarto here, whether we want the format to be HTML or PDF. And the other thing that we may want to change occasionally is some execution options. And we wanna tell it specific things about how we want our code to be executed. Do we want it to be evaluated, first of all, or do we just want the code to be echoed in the document? Um, do we want the code to be evaluated um, but the, uh, but the code not appear in the document. So we can set echo to true if we want the code to be evaluated and we want the code to be executed in the document, but false if we want the code to be evaluated, but we don't want the code to appear in the document. Um, do we want warnings to appear or not? Um, errors, etc. Okay. Um, so those are some of the options that we can set in the YAML header. So the YAML header is a crucial piece of the document. Again, not something you wanna delete. Okay, so the next thing I wanna tell you is that when we're working in Quarto, we're gonna be writing in Markdown. And if you're not familiar with Markdown, I'll put a link to a Markdown guide in the, on the course website. Uh, but it's really simple. And the template gives you some examples of basic Markdown here. So if you want a section header, you write hash and then whatever you want the title of that header to be. Or if you want a slightly smaller section header, then you use, like they have here, two hashes. Or if you want it to be an even smaller subsection header, then it would be three hashes, subsection header, okay? And this is how you would embed a link to a website. Uh, another way to embed a link to a website is to write some brackets um, and then the text that you want to appear and then the URL of the website. And then this will appear as link in your document, but this will not appear. This will just, the document will just take you to this website when you click on link, okay? And I'll show you how that looks in a second when I render this document. If you would want bold text, you would use two stars on either side of the word. Um, this word render is going to be bolded when we render this document. If you wanted italics, you would use 
one star on either side of the word. All right. So have a look at a markdown guide if you're not familiar with it and you know play around with a quarto document and try different styling with basic markdown. So uh, from there, next thing I want to show you is a code chunk. We've already had some exposure to this, uh, but this is a code chunk and an easy way to get a code chunk in, an, uh, in a quarto document is just to hit this icon up here, insert a new code chunk, and that gives you a new R code chunk, okay? Uh, but basically what a code chunk does is it allow you to write the code. This is how you integrate your code with your text, right? So you write the code and then you can run it, right? Just by hitting this little arrow up here, okay? But also when we render the document, this code, depending on what settings we have, but the default is that this code is gonna appear in the document and then the output is also gonna appear in the document, okay? Um, and like it says here, you can change the execution options. So for example, if you wanted the results of the code to appear, but not the code itself, you would write hash pipe that indicates that you're going to put a code chunk option in the code chunk. So hash pipe echo colon false. That tells it not to echo the code, but to still execute it and give you the result. All right, so what you would do next is save this and then render it. But before I render, I want to change it back to HTML real quick. So let's render an HTML document first. Okay. And then it should render the document as an HTML file and it should open up in a brow in your default browser. Okay. And so this is what you would see. So we have our quarto little subsection header that we wrote, the author, professor T, our subtitle that we put in, notice that that has changed as well. Um, and this is our link to the Quarto website, right? And that goes to the Quarto website, okay? Then we have our code down here. This is the echoed code. So this is the code that we wrote. So Quarto is embedding that in the document and then it's giving us the output. And then where we said echo false, it gave us the output, but it didn't give us the code. Okay. All right. So that's basically how the HTML works. So now next thing I want to show you is what if you want to make a PDF document in order to render a PDF, you have to have some version of LaTeX installed because Quarto uses LaTeX to render PDF. Um, what most people use is tiny tech, which is a lightweight version of LaTeX that's optimized for integration with Quarto. To install TinyTech for Quarto, it's really easy. You just go here to Terminal and you type Quarto install TinyTech and hit enter and it'll install. I'm not gonna do it now because I already have it installed, but that's basically how you do it. So once you have TinyTech installed, you're ready to render your PDF. Uh, and all you have to do is change this line here from a uh, format from HTML to PDF and then click render. Okay. And that looks like it worked and that should also show up in your, in your browser, right? Uh, automatically. So you should be able to see the PDF document. And as you can see, the styling is a little bit different here because it's a PDF document, but you should also see the PDF saved here in your project folder. So you can click on that and then that should open in whatever your default uh, PDF viewer is. So in my case, it's Sumatra. Um, so it just opens there as a PDF document. Another uh, nice feature of Quarto that I wanna uh, show you is this visual code editor. So um, let's say you get tired of writing in Markdown and you just kinda wanna have something more like a Microsoft Word editor. Um, Quarto offers something like that, right? So instead of typing code here, we can uh, hit this bold icon uh, for bolded text. Or if we want this to be in italics, we can hit italic. Uh, we also have this code button. So let's say we had the name of a package or something that we wanted to uh, highlight as code in our document, um, we could use that shortcut there. Um, 
Uh, there are a lot of other options here. So for different size headers, you can use this, right? Uh, so we were talking about this, our subsection header. Uh, we could have a different header here. And we can say we want it to be that size, header three. Um, there's a link shortcut here, a shortcut for embedding images and, and a lot more. And if you want, you can make the, uh, the visual editor the default in your document by setting it in the, uh, in the, in the YAML header. Okay, so that's it. That's how you create and render a document in Quarto, an essential skill for this course. And you should be ready now to tackle some of the modules.